Greetings. Uh, we're making this film at a rather difficult time. The uh, death of Osama bin Laden, uh, which assumedly has just occurred in Pakistan, has caused an outburst of really, um, I guess I want to say, demonic behavior on the part of many of our fellow Americans. And we feel very strongly that to take pleasure in the suffering of another hum human being is the exact opposite of humanity and its exact opposite of nonviolence. And it leads to the most dreadful alienation. If you can rejoice at the killing of the, the suffering, the dying of another, you get extremely alienated. It's extremely unhealthy within you. And it also leads to dreadful mistakes in terms of policy. Uh, so, <coughs> Uh, what actually can we do, we who want to take advantage of this process as an opportunity, I think the first thing is to realize that this is not the time to challenge uh, people who are pumping their fist in the air, uh, certainly not to get into any questions about the conspiracy theories, even though I happen to believe that we were at least partly complicit in the disaster of 9-11. This is not the time to confront people with that. It's not the time really to confront them with uh, what we've been doing in the Arab world for the last 80 some years, uh, but rather start off by agreeing with them wherever you can agree with them. Like we found it very effective to say to people, you know what, you want America to be secure. Well, guess what? So do we. But we have a different idea of how that security is going to be achieved. And if you look around carefully, uh, the idea we're working on right now does not seem to be working very well. We've killed thousands and thousands of people just to indirectly get around to killing this one person who had then by this time become irrelevant. We've wasted trillions of dollars. I think we could say that Osama bin Laden has basically beggared the United States. He started off with a two trillion dollar surplus and we end up with a ten trillion dollar deficit partly because of the mobilization of the country towards this enormously wasteful activity of spreading violence in the world. So we agree with you folks. We want America to be secure, but it doesn't look like we're getting there this way. And let's talk about doing it another way. We, uh, we want to comment on President Obama's remark that we all felt like such a family after 9-11. And yes, you get a certain family feeling around violence, around suffering, around a common hatred, but how deep is that f family feeling? So we're going to uh, develop an idea with you, and uh, Stephanie Van Hook will be talking about this in another video, that we call Love Your Enemy Day. The idea of it is to get each person to do some little act that would help you feel more of a family feeling towards another human being through generosity, through compassion, which leads to a permanent bond, which is not problematic, which doesn't depend on diminishing resources, and doesn't simply create more problems down the line. You know, we had one commander in Iraq who said years ago, we are creating terrorists faster than we can kill them. And I think even in the same breath where people are saying we're glad good riddance to that monster and all the rest of it, they're also saying, this has not solved the problem. We cannot live in peace. We are not free from fear. We have not achieved security. They're saying that partly because they're terrified that they would have to face the world without an enemy, but they're also saying that because it's true. Uh, they hate us and the hatreds have been increased already. Uh, the head of uh, uh, Hamas in Gaza has already broken off. Uh, what seemed like the beginning of peace negotiations. So we've destroyed a terrific opportunity for peace in the most critical part of the Middle East. So what we want to do is, yes, capitalize on that idea of a family. Yes, as a friend of ours pointed out this morning, by the way, we've had intense discussions about this throughout the day. As a friend of ours said this morning, Kit Miller back in New York, people are desperate for a sense of meaning. Yes, we don't want to take that away from them. We want you to have a sense of meaning. But doesn't meaning come more from forming bonds of beloved community with people than it does through expelling them, through killing them? Don't you feel more deeply human within yourself when you've done something 
towards creating community than when you've done something towards destruction. So <coughs> watch for opportunities. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been talking all day. Watch for opportunities when people have calmed down to match up with them where they live, where our passions coincide, and then look for opportunities to explain. Yes, we want security, but we want a deeper kind of security. We want total security, human security, not this uh, adversarial security. And yes, we want patriotism. We love our country, but we want our country to move closer to peace as a leader of peace development in the world, not as a bully that's trying to destroy enemies. So uh, we're hopeful, despite all of this, that um, some of our fellow Americans themselves will be disgusted by this outpouring of hysteria, that they'll start to realize they haven't accomplished anything worth accomplishing, and that at that point, if we have a coherent story pulled together, which we're working on, I think we may be able to talk to a lot of those people and explain to them why our model of a nonviolent world in which the happiness of another human being is intimately tied up with our own happiness makes sense, it's practical, and we can all make it happen. That is this. We can point out to them that what Osama bin Laden and his followers wanted to do was to draw us into a circle of hatred and violence, to draw us into a state of fear. Recognizing that hatred and fear are the same thing. They are one side. Love and compassion are the other side. Courage over here. Fear over there. We can point out to people that if we succumb to anger and fear, if we succumb to this kind of triumphalism, we are actually handing him a victory that we can outfox him by conquering the anger and fear within ourselves. That will be the greatest triumph that will insulate us, which will protect us from the hatred that he is trying or was trying to launch into the world. I think that's another important area where we and the, the people who might be afraid of our ideas actually come together and it's important to start that breachhead of where we agree as, I say in the, as they say in the search for common ground, identify commonalities, work on the differences. That would be the strategy. So we've listed off a few commonalities. We all want America to be secure. We all want to be respected in the world. We all want not to be drawn in to the kind of violence that uh, Osama bin Laden and his followers represented. Start from those commonalities, work on the differences. They think security is going to come from killing enemies. We think security can only come from turning an enemy into a friend. So that's the overall strategy. And uh, watch this space. We're going to be working with you further and coming up together with a more articulated scheme. Thanks very much.